Gervonta Davis knocks out in electrifying fashion Leo Santa Cruz. Let's talk about it. What's happening, boxing fans? It is Dr. Bring It. How was your weekend, everybody? Well, if you're tuning in to this video, I am sure that you were absolutely satisfied with the results. Unless, of course, you either A, lost a ton of money, um, B, um, was a diehard Leo Santa Cruz fan, um, and C, you just didn't care for either one. So um, let me just uh, sound off a little bit here. It is just really interesting that when you introduce politics into, into anything, especially boxing, that it tends to, to ruin the art form and the whole purpose why people watch boxing. Um, now, even that statement alone might be a little bit loaded because the reason why I watch boxing is because I just love the science of, of, of fight sports. Um, I, I love trying to find like the quintessential combatter and warrior um, and the way in which they move and strategize and apply tactics um, and how they marry the mind and body to be the ultimate warrior in the ring, to beat the other opponent. Um, for me, if you've seen any of my other videos, I try to break it down into like mental aspects and physical aspects of the sport. Um, I, I honestly couldn't care less about who a fighter has you know, has on their resume. Um, yes, it matters up to a certain extent, but it's, it's not the rule. What matters most is the skill set and the mindset that the fighter brings on fight night. Because obviously, I'm going to steal this, <laughs> this profound statement that one of our other... Um, fans have, have stated in my last video, there are such things as upsets. It's very true. So could this fight have been an upset? And what would the upset have been? Obviously, Leo Santa Cruz beating Tank Davis. That would have been the upset because everyone, majority of the people, expected Tank to win. He was coming down in weight and Leo Santa Cruz was coming up in weight. Uh, we'll comment a little bit more about that in, in a couple of minutes. Um, but for the most part, everyone expected Tank to win. Now, for me, I made the, the prediction that Tank was going to win by decision, unanimous decision. Why did I say that? Well, for one, he was coming down in weight. Um, so theoretically, he wouldn't have as much power. And then I gave Leo Santa Cruz a lot of credit for being a tough warrior with a granite chin. Um, he has a lot of fights under his, you know, under his belt, so to say. Um, he is a champion in four different weight classes, so he knows his way around the ring, and he has the experience to last typically to last 12 rounds. So that's the only reason why, but I did, I did have a caveat there and I said, well, if Tank Davis was going to win by knockout, it would be early. And actually it did, did come early in the sixth round. That's not too, too early, but I mean, a lot of people were thinking eighth round, um, but it came before that. And let me just tell you, I was, <laughs> absolutely shocked in the way that he knocked out Leo Santa Cruz. So 
before I get into the analysis of all of this, um, let me just say that Leo Santa Cruz lost in a very, very like gracious way. He had no excuses. Um, he was, you know, if anything, he still had a smile on his face, you know. Um, I, I'm thinking taking a loss like this, a devastating loss like this, and it probably will be the knockout of the year. Um, unless, of course, you know, Bud Crawford, you know, shows up um, in his fight in, in the next coming, um, you know, couple of weeks. Um, but let me tell you, Leo Santa Cruz, I, I definitely you know, have all the respect for him and hopefully we'll see more fights from him in the future. So what exactly happened? Um, in my prediction uh, video, I had said that Leo Santa Cruz was going to be pushing forward. Um, now, it was revealed to me that, that he actually didn't want to do that because he was respecting Tank Davis's power, okay? So that makes sense. That absolutely does make sense. But at one point, he is going to have to push forward because if he sits there to wait for a counterpunch, um, Tank Davis is also waiting for a counterpunch as well. Now, what's gonna happen is, is that if he actually waited for Tank Davis, um, and if, if Leo Santa Cruz tried to stay on the outside, <clears throat> then Tank Davis would actually beat him on the outside because Tank Davis is significantly faster than Leo Santa Cruz. He has a very explosive snapping jab. Um, and we saw that, okay? We, we did see that. And the only way that Leo Santa Cruz was really able to connect was when he stepped forward throwing combinations, okay? But as I said in my prediction video, when he does that, Tank Davis was going to step to the side or just move off the line and hit him with uppercuts. Now, the thing is, is that he did bang him to the body with some strong hooks, okay? He did connect. So Leo Santa Cruz absolutely felt his power from the very beginning. They did actually exchange, okay, a couple of times. Now, does Tank Davis have the best defense out there? No, that's something that he's actually working on. But again, you can attribute that to his style. His style is that you know, kind of trapping his opponent, having his weight on the front foot, having his hands up and baiting his opponent to come in so that he could do his, his signature counter. Um, so Leo Santa Cruz had to actually step forward in order to exchange. He had to do that. Now, one thing that he did say in the press conference after the fact, he said that he did something wrong, which was to throw three rights in a row, which allows Tank Davis to gain that timing. And obviously he was able to do so, but he connected this, this counter punch earlier in the fight. I'm not sure which round it was, but he did connect this very same move to the left and left uppercut um, in the middle of the ring. But of course, Leo being the tough warrior that he is, and he wasn't as tired at, the, at that point, um, and who knows, maybe he saw it coming also, um, he was able to withstand it the first couple of times he connected. Um, but like I said, as soon as he got to the ropes, like see in that sixth round, it was a little bit different. Um, he started to walk down Leo Santa Cruz, but Leo Santa Cruz was still able to connect here and there. But I think at that point in time, Tank Davis really felt that Leo Santa Cruz didn't have that much power behind his shots anymore. Um, Leo Santa Cruz obviously wanted to like hit, hit with some, some punching, uh, combinations, 
but Tank Davis felt that he could totally walk him down. He could totally get hit a couple of times, and he knows he's not going to get knocked out, which is why he ended up cornering him on the ropes and being able to gain time on him and connect with his unbelievable <laughs> counterpunch. Now, I, I, I just have to challenge everyone here. For the people out there who, who just watch boxing, who, um, who were not boxers themselves, I want you to get into a southpaw position here and feel this like this movement here, okay? Feel the movement of dipping down and throwing up. Dipping down and throwing up. Um, that movement, um, if you watch All Access or, or watch any of, uh, of Tank Davis's training sessions, this movement, he, he is very fluid with that movement. It's a very natural shot for him. Now, even if you know this, I'm sure Leo Santa Cruz's camp knew that he was going to employ this. This is, in my opinion, I, I don't know of, of any other boxing commentary out there if they've even said this, but this movement is his, I think, his, his most dangerous counterpunch. Why is it the most dangerous? Well, for one, you don't see it. So if you're a conventional fighter, okay, and you're, you're a righty, and you throw the right, you'll see nothing but your glove, you're blind spotted right here, okay? This is where, where Tank is coming from. He comes from down here, and this hand right here is outside the view. You don't see it coming from outside. So if you watch that in slow motion, you'll see Tank go like this, and he this around all the way down here, and it comes up. When you see it in slow motion, um, it looks very loopy, very wide, okay? But when you see it in regular speed, that's when you, you have to appreciate the way that he actually timed it. To be able to time eluding the, the right hand and then looping around and, and connecting with this uppercut, um... That's why he's one of the best, if not the best in the business at this point. And that's why Leo Santa Cruz even admitted that he did not even see it coming. He didn't see it coming. He was just covering up on the ropes. He just kind of carelessly threw a right out there. And by the time he went to go cover the body, because like I said, he felt the body punches already. He put his guard down like this. And where did Tank go? He went up to the head. I mean, it was so brilliant, and I actually jumped out of my seat, <laughs> covering my mouth, because I just could not believe the way in which he actually did it. Now, okay, so obviously, Tank Davis has a great road ahead of him. Everyone wants him now in 130, 135. A lot of people, Ryan Garcia is looking at him, is calling him out, Devin Haney, they all want a piece now. Teofimo Lopez, now obviously another hot fighter. Um, is he going to want to go for, for, you know, for another belt? Um, or is he going to defend his and entertain others? This is where like the boxing politics come in. And this is where the business side kind of takes over. And this is kind of what makes it sort of exciting, but frustrating at the same time for us boxing fans, right? I mean, we want to see, okay, you know what? I would love to see Ryan Garcia go against Tank Davis. Ryan Garcia, to me, like on social media, it seems like he's making the most um, noise in terms of calling out Tank Davis. Um, Devin Haney's out there, obviously, but he's also, it's, it's a little bit weird because Devin Haney, he's also being mentored perhaps by Mayweather, and obviously Mayweather's promoting Tank Davis, so I'm not sure if that will ever really happen anytime soon. Um, hopefully, we'll see Ryan Garcia even more. Ryan Garcia looks really good at this point. You can't ignore his, 
super fast left hands. But again, we have to be weary um, about what we see on social media. I mean, he he's he's really he looks really good on on Instagram, right? <laughs> you know, pounding on um, you know some some bags. Um, but it's not like they'll they'll hit back, right? Um, but I, I um, I'm really excited about Ryan Garcia, um, Teofimo Lopez, another great win that he had against uh, Loma. So he's in the mix. Also, he's going to probably want to, but I don't think I I think he's probably going to want to hang out and and enjoy his belts before going for some other champion. So who knows, maybe he'll defend at this point and, and, and sit back and relax for a little bit. Um, again, th this new generation of fighters, they want the spotlight very quickly. And knowing boxing a little bit, um, there's a lot of politics involved behind the scenes to make these fights happen. At the negotiation table, everyone wants to be the A side. Everyone wants to command a certain dollar amount, a certain percentage, a, per, a certain cut of, of the thing. So that's why all these negotiations, they, are, they, they get drawn out. And who suffers the most? Us boxing fans, right? Um, all right, so I wanted to also make a comment on some of the things that I've seen, again, like we live in a very politically charged um, world right now. Um, and, and I was listening to some boxing commentaries um, about, you know, after this fight about this. And it, it became like a black versus white. Or in this sense, you know, with this fight, black versus Mexican, okay, like non-black. Um, for me, honestly, I don't like to get into that sort of thing. I don't like to talk about boxing in terms of like, oh, are African-American boxers dominating or are Eastern European boxers dominating the sport right now? To me, honestly, we're, we're getting away. I mean, yeah, there, there's like some, some social aspects of the sport that we could definitely talk about. Me personally, I don't like to talk about it. Why? Because I don't care what color you are. If you are an awesome boxer that's showing and like just consummate skill in the sport, it doesn't matter what color you are. It really doesn't. Um, so, you know, like some people have like commented and like asked me what I thought about this sort of thing. And personally, again, like I, I don't even want to get into that stuff because it kind of ruins the conversation about like what great boxing is. Um, but I do have to say that we are all entitled to be proud of our heritage. So if I was an African American, I would, let's say, if I wanted to back my African American, um, you know, boxer. I have every right to do that. And we should all be grown and, 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 and understand that that's what we can do. Um, I'm Filipino. So did I back up Manny Pacquiao? Yeah, I absolutely did back up Manny Pacquiao. Um, however, moving forward, if I think that he would be able to beat like Terrence Crawford or, or, or Spence, that's another conversation. Now I know, you know, I haven't really delved into the the, the intricacies and the and the analysis of these matchups so much. Um, actually, I do have a video about my prediction between Crawford and Manny Pacquiao at this point. Um, but again, it has nothing to do with race. It has nothing to do with ethnicity. Yes, do I want Manny Pacquiao to beat everyone that's put in front of him? Absolutely. Can he? No. It's just what it is. Fighters win, fighters lose, okay? Unless, of course, you're undefeated, but that means you just haven't fought enough to lose yet, all right? Um, so that's all. That's my uh, analysis for this fight. It was an absolute gem. 
and, and gift to the boxing world. Tank Davis um, did what he had to do. I don't think he's a weight bully. Come on, people. I know that some even some boxers are saying like, oh, you beat a 126er. Okay, you know what? You might as well call Errol Spence Jr. a bully, a weight bully also. That's the thing. If the fighter can go down and make weight and be official, that's what it is. That's the business. When I used to wrestle, I wrestled very heavy. I was a heavy person. I'm still a heavy person. Standing at 5'8", you know, when I was in eighth grade wrestling, I actually wrestled 143. Now, those 143 wrestlers out there in eighth grade, guess how tall they were? They were like this tall. And I lost. <laughs> so, you know, um, it is what it is. So these fighters who can get down and wait, damn, if he can get down to 122 and fight in new way and a new way can go up, let's see it. But you know what? I don't think that's gonna happen. But hey, if Tank decides to go down and wants to do that, which is probably not gonna happen, I'm just kind of being, you know, I'm just saying this just for example. Um, you can't hate a boxer for just doing what he does because Tank Davis is an awesome boxer regardless of what weight he is, okay? So anyway, those are some of my thoughts. <laughs> Keep the comments going here. I'm like really interested in what you guys think about this fight as well. We'll share thoughts about it and keep the conversation going. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, um, if not, that's cool too. Like the video, share the video with other boxing enthusiasts. Um, it'll be really interesting to see what you guys think about it. So until then, enjoy your boxing. Talk to you soon.